Hi, this is Glenn and this is Ship Fitting 101. I've been doing this stuff since I was 17, off and on. Unfortunately, in Washington State, there is no permanent employment for ship fitters. But that's the reason why the, the, the art of understanding how to do things has kind of been lost. I was recently on a job where it was just utterly painful to watch uh, these welders weld in a very wrong process and fitters to fit like crap and expect welders to weld it up so it's but you do the job right the first time you don't have any issues so this being ship fitter 101 the most important thing as far as I'm concerned and everything is important but this is my pet peeve is welding an insert okay all right you have a, a plate I let my daughter use this whiteboard. I don't use a whiteboard. This is my, my daughter's. Anyways, you got a plate, a hole in the side of the boat, right? And you're gonna fill it. The first thing is, you don't cut it out with square corners, right? Because there's no corners on a boat, none. So that was one of the first mistakes these guys made. Not saying you can't do it on uh, decking, but on the side of the boat, no. All right? So let's add our little radius here. All right. Okay. So the other thing, if you're a fitter, you explain to your welders how you want it welded. Okay? Now, for one, it should be strong backs on there. That sh should be number one. But we're not going to worry about that right now. So the fitter is fit, fitted in there. Put his strong backs up. It's all flush. It's ready to go. He's got his basic bevel, right? Boom, boom, boom. Welder's going to come in and start welding. Now, on this last job I was on, uh, there were two companies. The company I was working with that was doing it totally wrong. And another company that was there that everybody was saying sucked. They're the ones that were doing it right. So, you know, get that one. And I actually told the, the welder who was doing it properly, I said congratulations on actually knowing how to weld an insert. So, here's the thing. You don't just start welding, boom, 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 boom. You know, you get a welder, eh, sitting down there, puts in his root pass, and he starts going around. And, he keeps going around, he does this, and then he starts filling it up, and, you know, all this crap, just hardcore. And he just keeps going around and around. No. That is not how you weld an insert. Never. Why? It will crack. And if it's on the side of a boat, Water comes through those cracks, right? So you don't do it that way. What you do is you start, you can start here, and you work your way here, and then you work your way up, and that's it. You don't continue on, you don't do nothing. You put your root pass in, you go all the way around. Then, in reality, you can do all your cover passes, everything all the way until it's where it needs to be okay and also too guys and I've seen this I saw this on my last job say they had a quarter inch gap well, let's, let's say it was a little bit bigger right and the guys filled it filled it and 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 then he put a cover pass right in the middle after you ground out everything. No, you don't do that either. You, you, that's how you do it. You gotta put two beads on there like that. They gotta be able to grab the old and the new. Grab the new, grab the old. A side note, but that's how you do it. So you put your root, you put your covers. Now, in reality, even if you have the little backing strips on there like they like to do, which uh, 
I guess they come in handy sometimes. You still should go underneath and scarf it out, right? You still scarf it out, or you can take your grinder and I guess gouge it out, and then you and then you go underneath and you finish that up. Then, then you come on top and you finish it out. Then you come on top and finish it out. You know why you do that? This sucks everything over. Remember, we have our straw backs on here. Things are still in line the way they should be. Things are still kind of tacked in. I'm not saying that you can't tack it in. But you will find that most of your tacks that you put in are probably broken. Right? That, that's the reason why you might have to dog it a little bit and get it back flush again. Put your strong backs on there and then start welding it again. And you do the same process up and over until the end. Another thing too, you welders, and you fitters, and you need to teach welders this too. Or welding supervisors or whatever they got out there. Half the guys that, that I've dealt with came from construction world and they think, you know, they went to school and they read a book and they think they understand the shit. They don't understand nothing. Another thing I've seen too is welders will put stringers down like on here. They'll put stringers down over like this. You know? And then they'll start again. Alright? And then they'll start again. Now, guys, that's not how you weld really anything, to be honest with you. You put your one stringer here, you start down there, and then you have your second one that starts in, the, in, in this spot. And then and you're always constantly doing this. You know what I mean? So, that's how you do it. You, you, they never end at the same, they're always staggered. And there's a way to do this. So you just take this and you make that a little longer, and your second pass you make that a little longer, and your third pass you do whatever. That's how you do it. That's how you weld an insert. You do it any other way, it's going to crack. You may not see it crack immediately, but after seasoning the bearing seed, it's going to crack. So, that's a little bit of ship fitting 101 how to weld an insert there for you. And I've seen that this is uh, in regards to stringers or, or ribs. You can call them ribs on the side of a boat. You got the boat coming down, right? And then you got your your ribs on the inside. Right? And then because you've taken out a section, let's say you took out a section over here. This is a side view of a boat, and you took out a section here, right? So you got a couple ribs that go in. So the guy's taking out those sections of ribs. Now, instead of now this is what this is what I've seen done, okay, and it's it's not right. So, so you know what I'm talking about there. Let's go real quickly. I will try to three-dimensional draw this for you out there, right? So that's the side of the rib right there. Boom. And this goes continues on. But you have a guy that cuts a hole in, so he cuts a hole in here. So let's say he just cut this piece, this one existing piece here. And he cut it there. And he cut it down there. Alright? So he cut this section out. Now, and I swear I've seen this on boats, some guy will come in. And instead of laying it in, in the middle here, you know, he then overlays it on top. So I'd be overlay. I want to get technical now, these would be this the dash representation. He brings this down, he overlays it over the top.
No. No. You don't put it on top of the other. This creates stress points. I know you might think, well, it's over the top, so it's got two points of well. Look, on a boat, you want things to move. That's why there are no corners on a boat. That's why everything needs to have a rat hole, you know. That, that means even, even when you do have a, 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 an L bracket, which I've seen people do this too, they'll have an L bracket, right? And they'll, and they'll put it, they'll weld it right up to the bulkhead and around. Right up to the bulkhead, this is the bulkhead. They'll weld it right up to there. And it's like, no, no rat hole. Just weld it all the way to the corner. This is the top tack. All the way up. No. You can't do it that way. And if you're a good fitter or a good lead and you're seeing your guys do that, you need to stop them. Or if you see a fitter not putting a rat hole in, you need to educate him and tell him, look, dude, you can't, you can't be put button thing. You can't be overlapping things here. You have to butt them up. That gives it the strength, and that really gives it the ability to move as it needs to. Just by welding it directly on there is how it's supposed to be done. Another thing, you need to yell at your guys. You need to say, look, you need to put a rat hole here. You have to have a rat hole there. And in reality, depending on where you're at in the boat, you shouldn't be welding all the way to the beam with the L bracket anyways. You should be taking that and just cutting it back and welding this section. That's all it needs. That's, this is your support. Support, right? This, when things are coming down and bowing and doing this, and, and now you've stiffened up, up where there's no side to side, that's when it snaps and breaks. It may not break the L bracket, you know. It's going to break the tacks along the top. So, just simple things. Sim simple things that you can, you can do. What was another thing I saw? I'm trying to think of things I saw to make this one video. There's a lot of things I saw, but... Oh, another thing I saw was very interesting. is that when they did have a gap, I would see welders fill this gap all the way up, right? And they would say, we want, we want everything to look good. So first of all, the fitters were, weren't fitting good gaps. Well, they were fitting like this, this kind of horseshit, you know? That's not straight. They couldn't, they couldn't put two plates together that was straight. So what the welders would do is down on the bottom they were running one bead. So it would get up to a point to where now the gap on your second plate or at the top of the plate is wider than what it was on the bottom of the plate. So what do they do? Oh, well, they just fill it all the way up. So this is the side view here, your plate. They'd fill it all the way up. Fill it all the way up. And instead of putting a dual pass, which was needed, or even, God forsake, three passes, they would just fill it all the way up, grind it flush, and then just put one bead in the middle. Now, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. I don't care how pretty it makes it look, you can't do that. And I've seen it done just recently, just within three weeks of me putting this video up. This is why I'm doing these videos. I, I'm so, so frustrated that no one teaches people how to do things. That's one. That's another one. Trying to, trying to remember some of the other stuff I saw. It, it seems like, you know, nobody... Oh, here's another one, too. Here's another one for you guys, your, your welders and your fitters that working with welders to, 
make sure they know what they're doing or welding supervisor or whatever you guys have out there now you need to teach your people how to back stitch that means you start here and you weld backwards and you start here and you weld backwards you start here and you weld backwards now I know everybody likes to use the MIG machines and MIG machines are great on flat surfaces in corners stuff like that I'm not an opponent for MIG machines on overhead or vertical unless it's in a corner but because they use MIG machines now nobody back stitches anything so when you're working on a deck plate and 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 they don't uh, uh, they don't put um, uh, strong backs on it you get a guy that starts here and he's just and then you get a deck plate that looks like this after a while and people go oh why is it looking like that well for one reason is probably your gaps were screwed up second reason you didn't have strong backs on it and you didn't really flatten it out tack it in place then put the strong backs on it you know I've seen guys I've seen guys who put together um, plates like this and then they put a strong back on it thinking it's gonna have some sort of effect it won't have an effect unless it's flat to begin with but here's the one reason why you you, you won't have this issue is you back stitch back stitch now now I know I know there's some managers and guys out there don't know what the fuck they're doing they go, oh I don't like the way that looks uh, well if you burn too much heat into something it kinda warps and, and makes it all look even worse than what this does because here's the thing here's the thing about welds after one season on a boat they all look the same just to let you know there's some guys that get so caught up with that little shit about how things look now if they look like dog shit that's I mean that's bad enough but back stitching back stitching So let's let's do the let's do a final one here. And I'll put all this stuff in one video. And that's what this is. This is called a dog. Right? It's got a little little hole here. And remember your dogs and your rat holes need to be big enough to fit that stupid big ass MIG end in there. They can't be little tiny things because you can't get everything in. Unless you run a stick, then that's another story. But these things need to go on plates. So if you got a plate, one side's flat. This is what I used to do it. Attack on here, attack on there. But let's say this plate was glued down. And I have what was called, I have one of these, basically. It looks like this. All right? Go over. What did you do? You stick a wedge through here. Boom, boom, boom. It sucked this up. Once it sucked that plate up, then you tack in here and you tack in there. Always on the same side so you can knock them off. Don't tack on this side on one and then tack on the other side. You won't be able to get the, you should be able to hammer the, the, the strong back off. But you put these up so you raise up the side you need to raise up to. And then you tack it in the middle or you tack it where you need to. And then you start welding. And you put those all along your job. very simple and if you don't want to do it this way before you put these on you can create a little dog it looks like this very simple right and you would weld this on this side all right so let's say this is this is that and this is where you want the plate to be on this side see it's a little off center so you take your wedge you hammer it in here that will lift that up, you tack that in. That's how you do it. Knock that off, you put a strong back on it. That way you don't have plates doing this. I had a guy yell at me because the plates were doing that. He said, you didn't put any strong backs on it. I said, you welded out the hole inside first. There's no way you're gonna fix it. You should have had this done before, you know? It's like, you're going to put a strong back on something that's already screwed up? You, you can't do that.
you gotta you gotta start from the very beginning right because because in order to fix it later you're gonna have to cut it all out and redo it but that's the problem you know people don't hire guys that really know what's going on in this business they just hire guys I don't know how they hire them. maybe somebody knows them or they work construction so they think all oh, these guys will know what they're doing on the boat no dude no Uh, there's one other thing I was thinking about. Um, I think that's about it for now. So, how to weld an insert. How to properly insert for a uh, um, your side rib, right? Using a strong back. Uh, back stitching. Uh, the basics of a dog. And... Um, rat holes. Remember rat holes. Anytime there are no corners in boats. So anytime you have something coming up to something else, you put a hole on it. All right? Here's a here's a here's a stiffener in here, right? Here's your stringer. It's coming up to a bulkhead, let's say, even. This is your top deck. It's coming up to a bulkhead. You don't you don't weld out that corner. You have to notch in called a rat hole. Weld this side over, you weld this side in. You usually give yourself, I don't know, I always used to give myself six to eight inches on, on this end, and then you do your skip welds. And then you weld out that. Like I said before, this, this angle, is usually cut out at, at an angle. So it's not touching the full L part. It's only really touching this part. Only this part of that bracket you're really welding. But some places don't do it that way. But you look at a lot of state jobs that are run by people who understand rough weather and rough seas. They'll always cut out and taper out that back. So if you're a new guy and you don't understand that, well, you need to explain this to your construction lead that has no background in boat building. And I think everybody knows what a hot tack is. So if you're, you're running a, a, a top plate in and you got your stringers running through and you got a string in this little gap there I don't know why, maybe you didn't put them in right. You can't put a tack in there and have a guy on top smack it down. But the best thing is just to do it the right way. Um, I'll say one nice thing with the, the, the place I did work at last time. Your stringers, when you're tying in your stringers, you, you, you put them at an angle. But, however, I will say this, if you're going to put in stringers and replace old because you do a cut, um, literally, I swear to God, they, they replaced one stringer that, that had literally that much left on the end. It's like, just... That much left on this end, that much left, it's like, just, just do the whole thing. But again, companies, managers, upper management, you need to hire guys that know what, kind of what the fuck they're doing. And especially in the boat world. And unfortunately, it's such a dying industry that most of you guys only learn by mistakes. But the biggest mistake you can ever make, in my opinion, is not welding an insert properly and not knowing how to tie in your stringers. Everything else is kind of a hit and miss. Guys that don't know how to butt up two sheets together. Um, but anyways, that's how it's done. This is Dr. Cogshell trying to just help out. Whether anybody cares about this video or not, it's kind of irrelevant. It will be out there and uh, those who know the industry, 
will know that what I'm saying is correct. Those who have no clue about the industry will always have no clue because they don't want to learn anything. But when a boat sinks, then you'll figure it out. Oh, well, that was the reason why. Unfortunately, unfortunately for those who can't do it the right way, it's very hard to dig up a boat out of the water. You know, they're still digging out that Titanic. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's because somebody welded an insert in properly. You know, hit that iceberg just right and ripped right open. Have a good one.